The thing I want to talk today about is how do we use data to really live in a chaotic world? What does it mean? We're all talking about big data. We're all talking about all the amazing stuff that's happening around data. And we all know data is important. We all hear about, hey, how do we make data-driven decisions? And you really know you start to get important when you're on the cover of Business Week. This is an example from a, a couple years back where math geeks are calling the shots, is your business next? And part of the uh, amazing thing about this, and I don't have the other cover, is the following cover a few years later where they said it's math's fault for the crash of the economy. So, but we got two covers. So there's something to that. But what's more so is we're also on all the best sellers, like all these things, Tipping Point, all these different books. Everyone wants to hear about how to use data in your business. How do you use data to change social? How do we think about all the great ways to, uh, that you can do data? And even O'Reilly is into it. Uh, these are three recent uh, free books that have come out, two by Mike Lukides, one by myself, all on different aspects of how to start thinking about this new data world. And so what got me thinking about this was, well, how do we really think about data? How do we, how do we really convey how data is important? Because we usually talk about hypotheticals. We talk about examples inside industry. And what I thought about was, we should just start with a simple science experiment. You know, we've had Joey here from the university. So what better than to show is uh, a little bit of a science experiment. So I brought my own science experiment today. And uh, this is uh, what's called a double pendulum. And so this, for those of you that have ever heard the, the term chaos and chaos theory, this is one of the, actually, the original devices that was used to discover chaos. And so it's just two pieces of uh, material here. And uh, there's, you can see the equation, or the, the thing, all that, that controls this is the position of this one, the position of this one, the angular momentum, or the angular momentum of this one. So to do an experiment, I'm going to need a little help. And here's what we're going to do. So to, to warm up first, raise your right hand. Some of you, that's the other right. There we go. All right, everyone's got the right. And so now with this, one of the things to think about here is now raise your left hand. Simon didn't say. No. Put both hands together. Now we're going to practice. Clap. We can do better than that. Let's try it again. OK, so here's the game. Here's what we got to do. The goal of the game is, when is the last time this blue one is going to go through this one? So you want to be the first person to clap when this blue one goes through here, OK? Or the last time it's going to go through. So if it goes like that, and you clap, and it goes through that, you lose. So you got to be the first person, OK? So now this is a little tough. So you're going to get two claps. Everyone got it? You got to clap on the last time this goes through, and you get two claps. So here we go. Now watch closely. All right, here we go. So maybe we can get the camera on that and see what. So if you guys can see that in the back, you can see what's going. Oh, so one one clap is gone. Wow, some of you are really bad at this. <laughs> So what's happening here? What's happening? Why are people going, going, what's going on? Your eye is making predictions. It's making tiny, tiny little predictions. And yet, they are always breaking down. So your mental model of what's happening is constantly, constantly breaking. And here's the crazy thing. This device, if you were able to start this perfectly with the identical conditions, everything identical, it would always do the same behavior. But the slight air currents, everything, make it different. So if I had two of them and I dropped them at the same time, they'd look the similar for a little bit, and then they eventually do very different things. And that is actually chaos. <laughs> I swear there isn't an app for this. <laughs> and here's the crazy thing. So it's still, your mind is still, oh, no, not yet. <laughs> this is a chaotic world. This has only four variables. Think about how many variables are in your car. How, think about how many variables there are in your business. Think about how many variables there are when you're trying to solve that social situation. Anybody? I think there we go. So there it is. So now, just as an example, I will spin it again, and you'll get to see how different the behavior is. So think about how different the behavior is. So here we go. We'll see what happens differently this time. So in fact, there is a way to control this. There is a way to actually make predictions. And the only way to make predictions about this, 
because small changes lead to very big changes, is to make, take lots and lots and lots of data. To take lots of observations, to make small predictions, and then to correct. And part of the way to think about this is it's exactly what's happening with your eye. You can make a prediction when it's maybe slightly moving this way, but if it's perfectly upright and it starts to fall, or you can't tell which way it's going to fall, that's where the prediction is going to go wrong. And so that is the hallmark of why you have to have a lot of data. Now, the way to think about this in your business for lots of data is, well, why better yes than a broomstick? Because part of it is to think about is if you were going to balance this broomstick on your hand, and you have data, and you were getting data, let's say, once every month, and you're going to try to correct the system that you're in. Well, what's that like? That's like trying to balance it, and you do that. And you try to correct, and it's going to fall. Instead, what you have to do, and if you ever look at this person that's actually good at balancing these things, you're making tiny, tiny, tiny little uh, uh, micro corrections. And so it's the same way. You're making that correction. In fact, if I took this double pendulum and I balanced it, and I had a computer doing this with a very small corrections with lots of high quality observations, I'd be able to balance it. And so that's the part of why data is so important, is that we're trying to take very, very complex systems. We're trying to understand what's happening with all that data. We try to take that data, we try to process it extremely fast with extreme accuracy to determine which variables are relevant. In this case, there's only four variables. And from that, the only thing we can do is to do the judgment or to make then assessments and predictions about the way the world works. So with that, that's an example of how to think about uh, chaos and data and how it all ties together. Thank you.